Joining us now from his home, I think, is JTA. And uh, Juan, how's mom today? Are you going to see her today? Yes, I'm actually about to go see her as soon as we're done with this interview, take her some flowers, take her a nice gift, and uh, spend the day with her and treat her like the special lady that she is. Indeed, and she must be a proud mom. You've gone, Juan, from being undrafted to playing overseas in the Mexican League two years and the Warriors G League team, and now you're in Steve Kerr's rotation. I'm hearing talk about a multi-year contract. What do you think about when you reflect on your journey? It's so cliche because everybody always says the beauty's in the journey, right? The beauty's in the struggle, and uh, that's so true. Um, I'm not saying that I am, I've reached the pinnacle or the, my ultimate goal because my ultimate goal is to establish myself in the NBA and uh, be here, have some longevity here. But the fact that I am here now, it's, there is some feeling of accomplishment, and I look back and I miss certain parts of my life sometimes. I was very dismissive of certain things in my life, certain accomplishments, just because I was always, always envisioning what I, where I am now. And so sometimes I reflect back and think that, wow, I wish I would have enjoyed that process or that, you know, that situation a little more than I did. Won't well, tell the audience why you wear the number 95. Uh, I wear 95 because that's the street I grew up on. Um, that's where my family's. We're still home base there. We're actually going to go spend uh, Mother's Day over there today. Um, and that was just my way of bringing my whole family on this journey with me, making them all feel a part of it. You once attended, as a young younger kid, uh, the Warriors uh, Bay Area Youth Camp. It was a free camp. Couldn't you envision at that time you playing, actually playing for the Golden State Warriors? No way, not at all. Um, I know that sounds kind of bad to say that I never even thought of playing for the Dakota State Warriors. I mean, it was an idea like, wow, that would be really cool. But never in a million years did I think that I would be playing for the Warriors, you know. Uh, so it's just crazy how life comes full circle, right? Who was your favorite player back then? Larry Hughes was my favorite player on the Warriors, uh, followed by Antoine Jameson. I was a big Mookie Blaylock fan, Speedy Claxton, Bob Sura, all those guys. I'm a real fan, man. So. Uh, I just love the game. I love going out to the games. It was a lot of fun. The one description, uh, one that I hear about you over and over is uh, tough as nails. Uh, where did that toughness come from? I came from my mother. My mom is my mom is an amazing woman. My mom is the toughest person I know. Uh, I wouldn't be be here without her. Obviously, everybody says that about their parents, but. I seen my mom in action and really do some crazy things where I was like, whoa, I'll, I don't even know if I would, you know, <laughs> do things like that. But I feel like any mother would do things to protect her children. And so uh, that's why I think mo moms are superheroes. Can you tell me one of these crazy things? Uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a guy trying to attack us one time and my mom got into a fight with him. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, like, I mean, I was scared, but my mom didn't show any fear. She's just tough. She didn't show any intimidation. But like I said, man, I think any mother would do that for their children. And so I know my mom loves us to death. I know she'll do anything for us. And, and that's where it comes from. I feel like I, if I showed anything shorter, short of toughness, I think I would be doing my mom a disservice. That's a great thing, a tri a tribute to your mother, actually. From your teammates' perspective, Tough as Nails mantra might have originated May 17th in Boston. You hopped over the scores table to save a basketball and doing so uh, suffered a serious head injury. Was that plain instinct or do players have time to uh, judge the risk versus reward of that type of play? Um, I think there is. I think once you analyze the play as it's happening, then you kind of like realize whether you're going to go for it or not. But for me, that's just instinctual. You know, at that point in time in the game, we had a chance to win the game. Uh, I like to consider myself a winner and I want people to, re if they don't remember me for anything else, I want people to remember me as a winner. So that's a winning play. I'll make that play 10 times out of 10. When did you realize that cut was pretty deep? Uh, so I passed out, I fainted on the spot, and then I seen everybody standing on top of me when I woke up, and 
everybody was grabbing me towels and I kind of just like put my fingers in my head and there's like a really deep groove like that you can kind of like wedge your fingers into. I know that's probably a little oh a TMI, <laughs> but yeah, when I saw it, when, when I felt that, that's when I panicked because I'm like, oh my God, like my skull's cracked. When did you finally find out that by virtue of saving the basketball, Steph Curry made the three point play? <laughs> uh, after I regained my consciousness and I was in the medical room, I was being stitched up by the docs and somebody came and told me, they were like, well, Steph made the shot. That's the bright spot of the play. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> that was worth all the stitches, right? For sure. I mean, uh, you know, to do it in, in the garden in Boston on national TV, playing for my hometown team, then Steph hits the shot. Like, I, our luckily our video team got the whole clip and so... Uh, that's something I'm going to save, and uh, I'm going to watch that forever. Tough as nails, man. Tough as nails. Won three plays last night. Uh, emblematic, I think, of the reason you're a Golden State Warrior. The over-the-head steal and the touch pass to Draymond Green for the easy layup. You made a three, and then Manion uh, alley-oop to uh, you at the rim. When you look back at a game, what are you most... Uh, proud of because your game is rounding into a lot of tools on the court. Yeah, um, I think those are all really exciting plays, but, you know, I'm just glad that you were able to name or refer to three different plays. You know, they're not all scoring plays. Um, one's a three, one's me going to catch a live, one's me getting Draymond an easy bucket. And so I think that's where I find most joy is being able to fill the stat sheet. Um, and that's my strength. Like you said, I can do multiple things on the floor. And I believe that's why Steve has grown to like me is because he can plug me anywhere in any combination and, you know, find that I can find a way to bring value and be effective on the team. And so um, all of them, I can't pick one. I can't pick one play. You know, the variety of, of plays is what brings me most joy. Perfect answer. I tweeted last night, uh, JTA, that Steph could have scored 70 had they played the fourth, quor uh, fourth quarter. What was it like as a teammate witnessing what Steph did last night? It's impressive. I mean, he never fails to impress. Uh, every day is just like, wow, how are you doing this? And I've been all over the world and played in a lot of games and played with a lot of different players. But this guy is doing it against the best of the best. He's able to do it night after night after night. And I have so much respect for guys who do this over the course of a season because it is a long season. You know, there are days where I'm tired. There are days where I'm banged up and nicked up. But Stephen Curry is coming out to do that every night. And so that's the most impressive part. Great answer. Who's cooking Mother's Day dinner today? Your mom or you? No, oh, definitely not my mom. Uh, <laughs> my grandpa, we're actually going to head over to my grandpa's house. He's going to be on the grill. Uh, so we're going to have some carne asada, some, some different things. I, actually, I'm not too sure what's going on going on over there, but uh, I'm just over there to support my mom and celebrate my mom, man, and my grandma as well. Well, after this interview and watching you play basketball, uh, everything you've overcome, she did a great job. Juan, I appreciate the time. I, I, I suggest no hopping over scorers' tables, but you're going to – not going to listen to that advice, right? Uh, not at all, man. It's not the first time I bang my head up and it won't be the last. So, hey, as long as God's got me, I'll be all right. I'll be able to bounce up to make another play like that. Juan, thanks a lot. I appreciate the time. Continued success with the Golden State Warrior. Thank you, Dennis. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. You guys are very appreciated. And again, moms are superheroes.